welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technologies video training. During this training session I'll show you how to set up and configure our new and exciting ILX56MM message manager. The ILX56MM message manager is an in-chassis module for the ControlLogix platform which enables users to easily migrate to ControlLogix platform from legacy PLCs or third-party PLCs such as Siemens processors using the S7 Industrial Ethernet and Schneider Electric processors using Modbus TCP IP. Now let's talk about what I'm going to show today. I'm going to demonstrate a Control Logix processor communicating via Ethernet IP to a slick processor, which is communicating to a Compact Logix processor, and a PLC5 processor by way of a remote rack Control Logix via Ethernet IP. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So, as we said before, the ILX56MM has a web interface for configuration. So now let's go ahead and open up your favorite browser, whether it's Firefox, Netscape, Internet Explorer. For this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and use Internet Explorer. So once your browser opens up, type in the IP address of the module. If you don't know the IP address, go ahead and take a look at the display, and you should see a, a 1 colon IP address. That 1 represents port number 1, which is set up as a static IP address, and then a 2 colon and another IP address. That 2 represents the DHCP address the module received for port number 2. So here's the initial page that's displayed. Most of these fields are just descriptions, so you can add a name, you can add a description to the application. You can add a location description. You can add contact information if you choose. And the serial number, MAC address, and revision level are generated from the module. So let's take a look and see how all that information actually looks on the module itself. As we zoom in, we'll notice that the name is being displayed, the description that we entered, the location that we entered, and the IP address for port 1 and port 2 as well as the revision number, the module name, which again this is the name that we entered in our status, device status. And now again, port number one, there's the static IP address. Port number two, we see the dynamic IP address given to the unit by the DHCP server. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the configuration. So I'm going to click on the administration tab and under the administration tab again we see our name description and I notice everything's grayed out so I'm going to log in the default username and password are both admin now you'll notice that the items are no longer grayed out some of them aren't DHCP is because obviously you don't assign an IP address so let's just look at a few of the settings so under port 2 we see that it's set for DHCP and then port 1 is set for static and that's it for the network tab pretty basic so we'll click on the system tab and then we'll just scroll through a few of the different items within the description tab within any of the page that you're on you can always click on the help button towards the bottom and the help button will pop up the exact help for the page that you're currently on. Then we have a time sync tab so you can sync your time on the unit to a time server. Obviously I haven't did it yet. I'm not in Africa. <laughs> this is your audit page, the administrator audit page. So anytime the administrator gets on and makes changes to the configuration, adds users, Anytime the administrator does really anything to the module, it'll create an audit log for that. And then we have our users, our user tab. So you can add users, you can add users by and give each users different privileges. And our device status page, here's where you would enter in the name, the description, location, contact, that other information we talked about earlier. And then you'll see it show up accordingly. So I'm going to skip over to the chassis tab and once I click on the chassis tab the chassis will be interrogated by the module and it'll display the modules that are within the chassis 
we can click on the resources tab and we see that the CPU usage is fairly low, the memory used, and the CF card storage on the unit itself. Okay, so let's get started with the conf actual configuration. So the first thing we'll want to do, we will want to add a new interface. And on the new interface, I'm going to select my Control Logics processor. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to click on the Browse tab and the CPU will be interrogated and I will select my CPU slot number and then click on the OK button. So now we see that our module has been added or actually our interface has been added and now I'm going to add another new interface so I'll click on the new button I will give it a name Once I give it a name, I'll click on the Browse button. I will select my ENBT module and click OK. And now we see our two interfaces that we've added. Now I'm going to expand this window a little bit. I'm going to expand my ENBT unit. And under the ENBT, I need to add a module, or add a, a device, rather. Now I'm going to give it a device name. And I need to select the SLC type. And I need to give the IP address of the slick processor. I don't know that, so let me go ahead and pop open RS links right quick and find out which IP I'm going to use. Okay, so I need to select somebody's IP. I'm not sure whose these are, but <laughs> let's just select that guy right there. So 4.230. So we'll select that as my IP. I'll go ahead and enter that in here. 10.1.4.230. I will click OK. And now we see that our slate processor has been added. Now I'll add a new device under my ENBT. And this time I'm going to add the conveyor description and we'll take this to our Compact Logic CPU. And again, I don't know an IP address to a Compact, so let me pop open RS links here. And let's see right there. So 4.236, that's going to be the compact that we're going to use. I'll enter that IP information in here. And we will choose Compact Logics Ethernet port. I will click OK. And we see our Compact Logics. So the next thing we want to do now is we want to click on New to add a new device. I will give it a name. I will give it an IP address. Once again, let me grab the help of RS Links to find an IP address. And I am going to that ENBT. And let me just add a little more description to this. The more descriptions you add, the better it is, or the, actually the easier it is to, to remember which devices are, are going where. So make changes to the IP. I'll click on OK. Now we see that the last device under my main rack ENBT has been added. So now we will start adding tags. So under my slick processor, I will click new for new tags and once I click on new the slick will be interrogated and it'll return all the tags within the slick or actually I guess you could call them data files and I'm gonna go ahead and select the S0 tags select add and we see that our tags been added now I'm gonna drag it over and you notice that the status tags have a read-only attribute to them. 
Now let's go ahead and add one more tag. So I'll click on new again. And this time I'm going to select the N7 tag. I'll click on add. And then done. And we notice that our N7 and S0 tags have been added. And that should be good for the slick. So let's go ahead and add tags for our compact logics. So we'll click on device. Now actually before we do that we have to add the compact logic CPU. So I'll click on new and I will add the compact logics CPU once I get the name right. <laughs> Let's do that. So compact logic CPU is always slot zero and Let's see, let's go ahead and add tags for that. So we'll click on new tag. And once again, the tags are interrogated by the module. And for this, I'm going to, let's go ahead and select the pass counter. That's a counter that's always counting within the module for, right now it's the MCM module, which is our Modbus communication module. So that pass counter would be a good value to pass to another processor. So let's select the pass counter, click on add, then we'll select our write data zero tag, click on add, and now we see our two tags. Now let's go to our PLC5. So now we'll expand our 1756 ENBT link. We'll select devices, we'll select new, and this is where we need to add the DH Rio bridge. So add the DH Rio bridge. I actually know the slot number in the remote rack. I'll give it a descriptive name and then click OK. So now that we've added our DH Rio bridge, let's go ahead and add our actual PLC that we're communicating with. So under the DH Rio bridge, we'll click on Devices, New change it to PLC5, change the device type. You'll need to know the node number. I'm going to check our slings, double check. All right, node number two is where I'm going. Change that to node two. We will give it a descriptive name and click OK. Now I will expand my PLC5 that I just added. I'll click on New Tags, and you'll see that the PLC is interrogated and returns a list of all the data files within the CPU. So now I'll go ahead and add my tag. I'll select the N7 tag, N7 colon 0. I'll click on Add. And I'll go ahead and click on Done for this, and you see that the tag's been added. So now that we've added our tags and our devices, now it's time to modify our transfer list. Our transfer list is just that. It defines the transactions within the module. So I'll click on transfer list and now I'll click on new and we see the available options for the transfer list. We have retry the transfer until it's successful, continue on the next transfer, and abort. Stop transfer list execution on transfer error. So I'll go ahead and click continue and I'll give it a descriptive name. Call this transfer list one. Click on OK. And now you'll see that the transfer list one is listed. So now let's add some transfers to go with our transfer list. So select transfer list one. We'll select new. Now we have a source and destination. So basically it's a source tag and a destination tag. So let's go ahead and for now we'll go ahead and select a source tag. We'll use our compact logics. We'll use the pass counter that I selected or that I created earlier. And let's go ahead and write this into the PLC5 over DH plus through Ethernet IP. And on the left hand side you see the wait and transfer on change. The wait will wait until the previous transfer was finished and transfer on change only executes when the values have changed within the source tag. So I'll click on add and we see that the transfer has been added. Now I'll create another transfer. 
for this one we will select the slick processor we'll select the N7 tag and we'll write that into the compact logics processor and for the compact logics I'm gonna go ahead and select the write data zero tag so now we have our source and our destination I'll click on add and then I'll click on done and now we see both of the transfers that we created for transfer list number one now we need to add triggers for our transfer list triggers are just that they are triggers to execute the transfers so let's go ahead and select on select triggers and then we'll click on new and there's a bunch of different options for triggers right now I'm just gonna call it trigger one I'm gonna go with the default pull type the compare values are not going to be used for this if I was actually using the condition of equal there are several different conditions to use I recommend checking out the help file and it'll describe every condition within the the triggers for now though I'm gonna go ahead and select always always is just that that means this trigger will execute as fast as possible based off of the scan period so that all looks good I'll go ahead and click OK and lastly let's go ahead and add actions to our triggers actions are just that they are actions for the trigger which transfer are we talking about here so I'm gonna go ahead and select my transfer list one as my action I will select OK and that about does it for the configuration so I'm gonna go ahead and put this into run mode it's asking me if I want to save I'll choose yes or OK rather so now that we've saved our changes and went into run mode, we can go and take a look at the status of some of our transactions or transfers. So I'll click on status, and then we see the runtime status of the module. It shows your uptime and your logged errors. So we'll click on triggers, and right now I see that we're counting, but we're also counting errors. So the triggers are executing but there's errors that go along with the triggers and we'll click on transfers and we'll probably see the same thing so they're counting but we're getting errors now if we click on active errors it'll show us exactly why we're erroring out and I have a pretty good idea of why it's erroring out so let's go back to our configuration I first gotta put it in idle mode So I will go to our configuration, we'll select the appropriate transfer, and I believe it's that write data tag there. I believe that write data tag is a read-only tag. So let's open up our tags for the compact logics. And so we'll drill down to the devices under the Ethernet, which is the compact logics right there and then we'll expand it we'll take a look at the tags and notice the read-only attribute that means you can't write into that tag it's a read-only tag so what I'll do just for just for ease of what I'll do I'll just go ahead and delete this transfer for now just so we can see that the module runs without error so I'll click oh delete it I'll click OK now we'll go back to the status first we want to place it back into run mode So now we're in run mode and let's go back and take a look at the status alright so there's the status we see we have no active errors in the text description the transfer list is not erroring and the trigger list is not erroring so that about does it for this training session if you have any questions please contact ProSoft Technology and we'll be sure to answer any questions you might have until next time happy training Bye.